What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome in to CHGO Bulls Post Game. Coming to you live from our studios here in West Loop, downtown Chicago. I'm Peck, Bulls underscore Peck. Big Dave, to my left. Bow! Bow! BWL Sports, our pound producer on the controls is Joey Smathers! It's Joey Smathers. At Joey Smathers. Our guy, Will the Goat, will join us later on tonight's post game show from the United Center, where we watched the Bulls uh, handle the I feel sorry for them, Washington mm-hmm. Wizards. 127-98 was the final. Bulls cruising this one. Big night. Career night mm-hmm. from our guy Io DeSumo. Love seeing that. Uh, things getting a little weird, a little wild, a little chippy in the final minutes of this one, Dave. It was fun. It was weird and wild, chippy. But before we get into it, I have an announcement. Oh. <laughs> you know I make fun announcements. Oh, you do? You ready for this, Joe? Is this the announcement I think it is? It is the announcement you think it is. Y- y'all prepare yourselves. <laughs> ready for this. So I've been talking. <laughs> I've been talking about... My fantasy football victory this season and how mm-hmm. huge it was. Mm-hmm. And I told you all, when I get the trophy, I will bring it in to show off to everyone. This is not a trophy that's be passed around. This is my personal belonging to me for the rest of eternity in my existence. And I have brought it here to share with you all. And you too, Joey Spathis. I brought it for you so you can gaze upon greatness mm. and see what it looks like. It's beautiful. You ready for this? Matt, Matt already is approved. Oh, I got a sneak peek. It's beauty. <laughs> you ready? Joe, you ready for this? Joe's ready? All right. Here we go. Gaze upon it, ladies wow. and gents. Gaze upon that. Look at the wonderfulness of this. Earned. Oh, Earned. This thing is heavy, too. It's, dude, I, you it's can, you can kill a man with that. This is true crystal right here. Yeah. There's no glass on this, baby. This is real crystal right here with the name of the winner on the bottom. This is awesome stuff right here. I am very proud of this. True Thank greatness. y'all for being proud of me. It will sit here for the rest of the show and then go home with me, never to be seen up here again. <laughs> I'm a shot. Are, are you sure you don't want to do oh. a little show, show and tell over at the United Center? The Bulls haven't seen a trophy like that in quite some time. Oh, no, 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 no. Just no? gaze upon its greatness. Okay. Right. Take are some you, photos with you tonight. Are you sure you don't want to do a little... Uh, <laughs> Bulls win! One more. <laughs> Bulls win! <laughs> One more. <laughs> Bulls win! <laughs> <laughs> and do it for yourself. Ah, Bulls win and one for St. Patrick's Day. Bulls win and one for Matt's birthday. Ah, Bulls win. There we go. <laughs> we doing things. <laughs> We're doing things. Thanks for joining us, Bulls fans. Happy to have you here, hanging out with us on a Saturday night. Hope everybody enjoyed themselves today uh, safely, as responsibly as possible. Saturday of St. Patty's weekend, always a wild day in Chicago. Always a wild time. There were people outside yelling, and we didn't know why, but then we do know why. It's Saturday of St. Patty's It's Saturday of St. Patty's Day. The river is green. The people are drunk. And the people are green, too, and the stuff coming out of them is green. Man, I, also, yeah, I don't know about you, but on my drive to the office today, I saw some pretty, pretty impressive signs of intoxication. Yes, very impressive. The one that worried me was drunk people on bikes. Oh, yeah, And I'm well, like, yeah, can we that? not? Can we not do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? Poorly is the answer. Yeah, you're right about that. (laughs) I like how Garcon said at least somebody is 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 having to commit to greatness around here. You got that right. That's right. Greatness, baby. That's right. That's what I was on. (laughs) Dirt run. Somebody said, could Big Dave go work for the Bears (laughs) with his football championship pedigree? Oh, my goodness, man. Look, nice. That was changes. the other reason that today was a crazy day. Yes. Justin Fields. Justin Fields, y'all. Headed to Pittsburgh. How y'all feeling about it? Uh, I think we know how Joe Cali feels. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Joe feels like they probably fleeced the Bears, you know? I'm probably. Sure, I'm sure he's talking plenty of trash. Probably. Because of that reason. And shout out to him, man. Big Steelers fan. Uh, our guy, Joe Cali. So, you know, no, they got two good, solid quarterbacks. They I, uh, really good you know, and I, I tuned in to uh, some of the emergency pod that our CSGO Bears crew did. Shout yeah. out to them. Yeah. Uh, you know, they were on that news quickly. Mm. And I, you know, I hope that we can, as a collective fan base, just 
put a lot of that toxicity mm. away mm. because of this debate that's been raging for months now about yes. Justin Fields, Caleb Williams. There's we saw some ugly shit. We saw Chicago sports fans say and do really mean nasty things to each other yeah. about a quarterback position. Yeah. And it, it was not the most flattering time for yeah. Chicago sports fans. Yeah, you were filling me in on some of those things that I wasn't aware of and I, that just yeah. kind of made I, me sick. I, and I bit. kept my distance from as much of it as I could. Yeah. And it even still just spills into your Twitter feeds and mm. people are crazy. But yeah, again, it's all rooted in passion. It's yeah. Passionate sports fandom. As Braggs always loves to say, fan is short for fanatic. We are uh, a fanatical bunch. Uh, thankfully, there was no stress involved in this Bulls win tonight. No stress, man. Save for, I mean, should we get the ugly part out of the way and then we can talk about all the nice things? What was the ugly part? The fact that Billy had oh, some oh. of his guys in there with five minutes to go, four minutes to go, three minutes to go. In a game where, yes, okay, the Wizards made a little fakey comeback there right. to trim it down to what? I think... 14, 14, 13, or 15, or something like that. Yeah. I mean, Io played 41 minutes tonight. <laughs> Come on, man. Those are Kobe's minutes. <laughs> he's, he's playing his minutes and Kobe's minutes now. Come on. And I mean, e even DeMar playing 35, Caruso playing Why? 34. Why? And then when you see Caruso get banged up on that one of the last plays when he was out there, still truly upset. Late in a game that had been decided and doing Caruso things, mm -hmm. diving on the floor, and you see him come up. Little hobbly, little gimp, and you mm -hmm. think, God, why were you in the game? Why? It's the only question I had when you watched that. Why was he in the game? It makes no sense. At some point in time, you just have to trust and believe your team can hold a 14 point lead against the Wizards. It's the Wizards. You're playing Boston, you know, you're playing even, even a Heat. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're playing one up, fine. I won't even argue. I'll be like, yeah, I, okay, I get that. If you can't hold that against the Wizards, you can't trust your team to hold that against the Wizards? <laughs> we got other problems, I mean, man. And then you create other issues. Even Adam Amin yeah. was on there like, you got to get your guys out of there. Yep. Like, you got to let them rest against the Wizards. It's the, it's the Wizards. My God. What truly upsetting sitting there watching that. Truly upsetting sitting there having to continue to watch that. Because, my God, the, it's the Wizards. I can't mm -hmm. keep saying that enough. It's the Wizards. It's the Wizards. It's the Wizards, man. The Wizards. It's yes. what they are. <laughs> General SDs. The Wizards, as Dave would say. We, yes, exactly. We sat there and played. Can you name more than four Wizard players on the team? Yeah. And we, we got to about three. Yep. And then it was like, you know, Joey Spathis? Dude, I mean. <laughs> like, who's on the team? The Wizards bench tonight was just legit NBA 2K creative players. Yeah, man. I mean. You know, Anthony Gill, he's been around for a while. Patrick Baldwin Jr. But, I mean, come on. The, a Butler, a Bernard, a Johnny Davis. Rashawn Holmes. Uh, some guy named Champagny. Champagny. I, I don't know <laughs> what's going on over there in Washington, D.C., but that is not a real NBA roster. Yeah, man. And, like, again, kudos to the Bulls for winning by this kind of margin. Yeah. What you hope is that you not only take advantage of a very winnable game, still trying to make your way towards the playing tournament. Yeah. You, you take all the winnable wins you can get yeah. and ideally not have to do it in you know crunch time that could go either way. Mm -hmm. One play deciding a game Yeah, because the Bulls tend to play those kind of games more than any other. But the cherry on top would have been actually getting some more legitimate rest for your key guys. Yes. And they failed to do that. Yeah. And by they collectively, I, I guess I shouldn't say it that way. Billy chose yes. not to do that. Yes. And I think Bulls fans uh, can be frustrated about that. Uh, <laughs> Brian saying Billy, Tim, uh, Billy Thibodeau, Tom Donovan. <laughs> so, uh, Billy is killing Caruso. Um, it was frustrating. And I saw someone come and say, AC is fine. That's great. It's the point that he shouldn't have even been in there right. to be in that position to have that even come up, you know? Right. 34 minutes for for DeMar was crazy because he clearly was chilling, chilling the entire game. He like, did not shoot a field goal attempt. Yeah. Well, so I think he got fouled on one early that right. maybe he went to the line. But his first official field goal attempt came with like four minutes left in the second quarter. Yeah, and it was a layup. Yeah. Oh, Io give him a layup. He took seven shots while he out there. You know, like, those guys should be the first to be having a seat. 
You have to trust your guys at some point in time against the worst team in the NBA. You've got to trust they can hold that lead, man, for real. It's the, it's the Wizards. It's the Wizards. It's the Wizards. It's the Wizards. Uh, Save big money at Wizards. Jiggy <laughs> like, uh, Josh uh, in the comments agreeing, saying just blew a team apart. Debo didn't even get out of first gear. Um Esteban saying the young guys were looking good. If Billy cleared the bench earlier, maybe the Wizards coach would have too. Interesting point. Uh, shout out, is, bitch. He to, out to our guys. See, yeah, exactly. It's like as opposed to the the <laughs> jaunting actual Wizards they were facing for a hot second there. Because I mean, their starting lineup: Holmes, Kuzma, Kispert, Pool, Kolabali. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, yawn, gag, and snore. Yeah. We don't know who's out there. All Yikes. Right? Stop. I, <laughs> Stop it, man. Uh, C-Red UK saying, check it in to give the like. Good of the night, Billy Donovan, playing the starter so long. Why, Billy? <laughs> um, uh, you know, we, we tend to... Or you tend to award Goon of the Night for do. doing fun slash good yes. Goon things. Yes. I think most Bulls fans are displeased with the goonishness of Billy Donovan leaving his guys in there as long as he did tonight. It was ridiculous. It wasn't necessary. You got to let your guy, trust your guys in that position and in that place. You want to leave Io in because you don't trust the 13, but everybody don't have to be in there. You didn't have all, all four of them twos. Like, yeah. It's like your starting lineup yeah. is in the game. For what? Yeah. For what, man? They can hold that lead. Like your bench can hold that lead together. Fine. You want to leave one of your starters in? Want to leave two of your starters? Fine. Okay, great. Want to leave Vooch in there? He didn't play a lot of minutes. Leave Vooch. Yeah, 29 and 12. Yeah, leave them in there. Great. Let them let them continue to cook these people. Wonderful. But DeMar's got to go sit and Vooch and I'm sorry, and Caruso has got to go sit. Yeah. Because we all know DeMar plays the most minutes out of anybody in the league, so he's got to sit. Caruso is often injured. So I can't take too many chances with a dude that we rely upon. Because especially with us losing all these wings that we're losing, Matt, you're going to need guys like Caruso to fill in on certain situations. So if I need you and I know I need you going forward, why would I leave you in in this kind of situation? To yeah. do what? To guard Jordan Poole? What am I doing, man? You got to trust your guys at some point in time. You got to trust your guys. Uh, our guy Fish in the comments said, I would have pulled him after that dumb Vooch uh, shit. And like that, you know, some of that weird stuff where Vooch was getting chippy with, uh, you know, Eugene Omoyuri. Yeah. Uh, who somebody also in the comments just said was playing like an offensive lineman out there. Like maybe, okay, he's he's got his own agenda. Yeah. He's trying to prove himself because he's on a shit team and he's getting bench minutes on a shit team. Mm -hmm. He he was out there th throwing himself and other bodies around yes, he was. in the fourth quarter of a game where it was a twenty five point spread. Yeah, that is okay. There is a way that you can understand why certain players and their mentality lead to actions like that. Yeah, I want to prove like, hey, Vooch, I can take you. Right, right. As soon as shit starts to get chippy, mm -hmm. unnecessarily so, in a game that has been decided. Mm -hmm. That is when I always feel, hey, anyone who does not need to be on that floor right now, get them off that floor right now. Because yeah. you never know what can happen. No, you're right. Because those guys are out there trying to make a name for themselves. 10-day contracts. Guys on a one-year deals. You know, straight out of the G League. Who, however, anybody don't know who you are. You're trying to stay in the league. And even when Vuce touched him, he immediately flopped. Yeah. Like, he was putting on yeah, a I mean, show. You know what I mean? He started putting on a show. I love what Stacey Key when he stayed looked like Draymond Green's uncle. It was hilarious. <laughs> By the way, that was absolutely hilarious. But yeah, man, like you can't have them out there in that situation. That's just it's I don't I hate it. I hate it so much. Only because of the team they were playing. Recognize who your competition is, man. And know and trust that, yo, my I think my guys can at least score a couple buckets. Cause that's all you needed was like two buckets mm -hmm. to put this back up. What, you need all four of them out there to get two buckets, bro? But team would do it itself. Like, goodness gracious, man. Like, it, it was frustrating. It was frustrating to watch. And even though I enjoyed the fact they won, and of course you're happy they won, you expected them to win this game. But I didn't expect those guys to be out there. I was talking, clamoring for it at the eight-minute mark. But then I was like, okay, fine, I understand. They're on the run. Okay, great. Five-minute mark, though, guys got to sit. You know what I mean? You got to sit down, bro. Like, mm -hmm. they can't be out there. But you're bringing in Funk and you're bringing in Sonogo with a minute to go because Ayo and them are still out there on the floor? That's crazy, bro. 
Sorry, that's crazy. I will not. I will not be with it. I don't care your reasoning. I don't care your ideology on it. When you're playing a bum ass team, shout out Joe Cowley. When you're playing a bum ass team like that, bum team alert, man. You cannot leave your starters on the floor in that situation. You have got to trust that your guys on the bench can carry that against a team that is that ass. <laughs> uh, yes. Well said. Alexander in the comments saying, why do we wait so long to see Sonogo uh, give it to Wizards 97, Omiuri, uh, uh, for playing defensive tackle? Yeah, uh, Sonogo did get in there, but not until the final minute of garbage time. Mm. Uh, if you're suggesting that you would have liked Sonogo to get in there and maybe throw his body around. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, Sonogo's got, got himself a job, and it's playing and playing pretty well for the Windy City Bulls and occasionally being called up mm -hmm. for active duty when he is needed, yeah. uh, and the Bulls are shorthanded. You know, still no Kobe tonight, obviously. Uh, Julian Phillips, uh, kind of a rough update that uh, we got today on yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, Billy saying that he will be out uh, and reevaluated in two weeks. Um, another foot injury. What is going because on? Because the Bulls players aren't allowed to have feet that work <laughs> we can't have nice things we can't have healthy feet i don't yeah. know what the hell this deal is but you, and you said it to me and it was nice because it it was like a little role reversal because mm. usually i'm the snarky one who's predicting the worst sure. preparing for the worst sure. you said to me he's done for the season yeah yeah <laughs> i mean i mean two weeks from now is basically the end of march yeah. you got the first two weeks of april regular season is right around finale is right around the corner so and, two weeks could turn to who knows. Yeah. And it was the fact that Billy said he'd been dealing with this. Yes. That's what I was like, oh, well, he's done. Like, because if you're playing through this and then they find out, no, something's really wrong, you're done. That's how I looked at right. it. I was like, no, nah, man. He, Patrick he Williams was playing through some discomfort in his foot, and then they looked, and then they found, <laughs> right. oh, you got a hairline fracture. Zach Levine was playing through some stuff that was mm -hmm. discomforting him in his foot. Hey, we found this loose bone flying around by itself in his foot where it's not supposed to be. Yeah, Lonzo Ball was playing through this pain that he had in his knee, and then, oh, my God, he needed a whole new leg. I was, it, what terrible luck. <laughs> like, seriously, for this Bulls team, man. Like, they've been on a terrible luck streak with these injuries, which is why I didn't want to see the starters back out there on the floor, man. Good God. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brian saying, Billy should have pulled uh, the starters after that Vooch Tech. Yeah. Uh, Rob saying, exactly what is going on with all these foot injuries? Training yeah. staff needs to be investigated. Yes. Mike saying, oh, so the rest of the season for Phillips then with this medical staff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's Is it just, like, weird... And dumb and kind of frustrating that Bulls fans have this feeling towards our team's medical staff. Yeah. And have for seemingly a long freaking time now. Yeah. Like, you know, they had players <laughs> that went through injuries that they dealt with back in the good old days, the glory days. Yeah. yeah Chip glory Schaefer days. left for a while and then came back. Came back, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They And like... Tanaka is no longer here. Tanaka. When the when the front office of Acme and Eversley came in, they brought in their people, and the coaching staff was overturned, and the medical staff yeah. was overturned. And yet, still, somehow, Some Bulls fans point. have to sit here on uh, t tonight with this Phillips update, or any other night or day with any other update, and always assume to ourselves and say to each other. Well, we know that this is worse than they're letting on. Yeah. And it's going to take some surprising turn for the worse eventually. Yeah. It's messed up that we feel that way about the team that we cheer for and how they physically take care of the players out there playing. Yeah. It's fucking bogus. Yeah. Messed up, bogus, all of that. Auto Porter Jr., yes. New Aldane, yes. There are many examples of this, uh, of it happening and, and those injuries piling up and occurring throughout this long history. Uh, since pretty much the D Rose time, you mm -hmm. know, it's it's been like that for the Bulls, man. And I just wanted to stop. <laughs> like I just would like a break from these injuries, if you don't mind, please. <sighs> Goodness gracious, we can't have nice things. We can't have nice things. Uh, let's actually take our first break right there. Then we'll come back and dive into some happy stuff, like Yay! the fact that I Sumu looks great tonight. I like happy. That was fun. Mm -hmm. But Tim. Had himself a nice little game tonight. He was solid. Talk about him, too. He was solid. Uh, we will do that on the other side of this ad break. While we are doing that, you know what to do, Bulls Nation, uh, which is be doing two things at once. Listening to us, read ads, check out the products we tell you about, 
and hit that like button. Mm. Do it for our guy, Joe. Yep. Do it. It's called a like spike now. Everybody hits the like button on three. One, two, three, hit it now. Go. Like spike. Like, like spike. spike. It's Troll Joey's favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need a like spike graphic. I think you need one, man. Like a, like the hat throw one that comes across, kind of like that. Or uh, like spike, right. maybe we just need yet another piece of earth shattering breaking bears news. Oh, and, you know, just yes. <laughs> see all the bears fans. Guys, you hear Justin Fields stream. got traded? <laughs> Yeah, I know. Hit the hey, likes right uh, yeah, now. Bear, Bears Mercy Pod is going to be uh, right around the corner. Just a few minutes while you're here, hit that right. like button. We won't release it <laughs> until you give us these likes. Brilliant by Joey, by uh, Indeed. <laughs> uh, Big Dave, who do we have on deck tonight? Ray! Ray! CDJR. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? Could be. If you are, then some great news for you. Our partner, Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Fox Lake, is celebrating the Jeep Celebration Event all month long. All month. Yeah. All month. All month long. That's how you sing, Joe. And. Hello. You know what that means? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? What? You'll be able to rave about their savings on a wide selection of inventory. Ooh. For a limited time, lease the new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo Altitude for $439 a month for 39 months. Let me tell you right now, wow. that's a pretty good deal. If that ain't big that's, enough. That's three years and three months. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty down good. Quick math. Brain, mine too. <laughs> if that Grand Cherokee isn't big enough for you, check out the third row and lease a new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited for four seventy nine dollars a month for 39 months. At Ray CDJR, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicago's largest inventories and drive home with more money in your hip pocket than you'd expect and that's why they got the Ray Price Promise. So don't miss out. Shop great deals all month long and save big because Ray CDJR makes buying a new vehicle more affordable than ever. But that's not all. That's not all. Mm. Just for listening, you can get a free oil change when you mention CHGO at the service center or mention CHGO when you book online at Ray CDJR. Slayasha service. <laughs> but you have to schedule before April 1st. So get that in, y'all, before April 1st. You can do it. So if you're in the market for a new vehicle, then you have to check out our team at Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram because they are the only team that we recommend. Visit them today on Route 12 in Fox Lake. For more information, visit Ray CDJR at Fox Lake or RayCDJR.com. Serving the community since 1963. Find new roads and let the roads lead you to Ray CDJR. Woo! Do it! Price Banks! I had to throw for Prize Fix. That's right, baby. That's what's up. Prize Fix is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Mm. It's worthy of a hat throw. Facts. Uh, they are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS, if that's your jam. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks and what's-his-names on the Wizards bench, mm. you just pick more than or less than on two to six different player stat projections for any game that you're watching and watch the winnings roll in. Football season's over. We know this. It's okay because the action on the hardwood is heating up. Heating Whether it's up. tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of year. Mm -hmm. uh, get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Thank you, Joe. Where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious K-Shola. Conference tourneys are here, underway. Mm -hmm. Crazy action going on. Shout out to Braggs, whose Purdue Boilermakers took a hard L in the Big Ten tourney. Shout out to Hogue. Got trolled by Ho, got trolled by Kev, a yeah. couple of our Wisconsin Badgers here at CHGO. Yeah, they were on them. Which, you know, I, I feel for Braggs. I do. I also, I have a problem with people who went to Wisconsin. What? Yeah, I know. It's just weird. Why? Because it's Wisconsin. Okay. Enemy territory. All right. How do you be a Chicago sports fan and then also like a diehard Badgers fan? Scholarship? Don't. Cut. <laughs> Paying for my school? Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Well, whoever you think is going to win the Big Ten tourney or any of the other conference championships, you can make some picks on it at Prize Picks. Be a part of the action for both men's and women's college basketball. You can win up to 10, I'm sorry, you can win up to 100 mm. times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four 
Correct picks. You Better. can turn ten dollars into one thousand dollars with NBA, college basketball, NHL entries today Sexy. on Prize Picks. It's America's number one fantasy sports app. Go to prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use code CHGO for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That's prizepicks.com slash CHGO. He's yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> use code CHGO. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. South Garcon says, I had a boss who was a Badgers fan. Total prick. Thank you, Garcon. <laughs> Cold hard evidence. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't think Kevin or Hogue are pricks. No. I think they're nice guys. They're very nice I guys. Just, Badgers. You just don't like their choice of schooling. Anything above that state border. No, thank you. He's not a fan. Not a fan. He's consistent. <laughs> He's consistent. Uh, Dave. Yeah. Career high. I have to assume you. Ball. 34 yes. points. Yes. I'm a little upset that he stayed in there longer than he should have or needed to. Mm -hmm. As soon as he got that 30, I would I was like, Billy, take him out. Oh, I was done. Yeah. Um, but he did it. He did it efficiently. 14 of 22 from the field, four of seven from three, one shy of his career high and makes behind the three point line, yeah. which is five. Also dishing out nine dimes, taking mm -hmm. on more of that um, you know playmaking responsibility in this yeah. hopefully short absence of Kobe White. Mm. And, and as much as I love the scoring, when you see Io find different ways and different spots on the floor to confidently get his points, I think I might love the nine assists and one, count them, one turnover even more than that. On the heels of a game where we were talking about Io kind of struggling in certain moments, yeah. taking on a larger part of those ball handling and playmaking responsibilities with Kobe out. He balled. I think it's that simple. And you're right. It was a great response. I understand the team he played against. We get it. But it was a great response to what he did in that last game. Because mm -hmm. we talked about, like you just said, how he struggled. I believe it was one to six from the three-point line, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Like, he really struggled in that game. But in this one, he really came out like he comes out every game, hot early. But this has just continued. And he came, he was relentless <laughs> like tonight. When he figured out they weren't going to play any defense and continue just letting him attack the rim, it was time to eat constantly. He yeah. all he did was attack, 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 and attack some more, and then attack a little bit more also. You saw that's how Vooch started getting off a little early on, because Io was attacking the rim and just dissing it off to Vooch, just getting him some, you know, easy looks inside. It was great. Like, I, you're right. The one turnover, the plus 22, he was tied with the team mm -hmm. uh, for the team lead and the plus minus. He was a plus 22 out there. But, yeah, it was just really great to watch because this is a guy we know who can I, – I, I said well, he's at a point now where you can just put it in pen that he's going to have double-digit points. I like when he's called upon to do a little bit more and he shows up for you in a big way. Mm -hmm. Not just in a way for Kobe's 34, but in a way because DeRozan was clearly chilling. So you're making up for those points, too, and, and those impact points, you know what I mean, to continue this lead and continue doing what the Bulls were doing and then also doing it on the defensive end because that's what he does. He plays defense very well. But he was great from beginning to end. He was awesome. He deserved all the accolades, all the water dumping on him. I hope they did, but show him all the love. We were very excited when he got those 30 points, man. We wanted Huge. him to get over that hump and get that 30. We were excited to see it. It's, uh, you know, he, he's always, I think, been a, a fan favorite mm -hmm. when it's just in, in similar ways that Derek was and still is. You know, it's not like Iowa was a second-year All-Star and, kind of, you know, third-year MVP. He did not retire. He is not on that track, and no, he did not. Also, can we, can we acknowledge how ridiculous it is that people are still getting duped by fake Woj accounts? Come on. <laughs> It's called Twitter alerts, people. Mm. Use them. Or if you don't, because you don't want a bunch of Twitter alerts uh, you know, popping up on your phone all day, every day, mm -hmm. um, then look at the account, maybe, before you retweet it, quote tweet it, comment on it, spread mm -hmm. it further. And shout, shout out to our poor guys, Adam and Stacey, who got, who got, got by it. Yeah, man. They got got. Well, what? it's no surprise that our buddy Braggs got caught by it. Well, no, not he always right. gets... it's called pulling the Braggs. Exactly. Right? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's called pulling, called the pulling a Braggs. <laughs> Shout out to him. Um, yeah, no, Derek Rose did not retire. But uh, anyway, like Chicago Bulls fans love Chicago products mm. who end up coming and playing for the Bulls. Yeah, true. Morgan Park's own. Like, yeah. we know Io. We really like Io. Mm -hmm. He seems to be 
a young man with a good head on his shoulders yeah. and has been putting the work in clearly to make improvements in specific parts of his game over the yes. last couple of years. Yes. And um, when you see him have a kind of bounce back game like this, and mm -hmm. yes, okay, grain of salt, it's it's the Wizards. Get it. But still, he was like, oh, we got the Wizards tonight? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be checked by, as somebody in the comments pointed out, like, you know, I'm not getting guarded by Paul George or Kawhi at any right. point tonight? Right. Right. Cool. I'm going to go cook their asses. <laughs> and he did. That's the kind of stuff you want to see from Aya moving forward, even if it is sometimes more a complimentary role and he won't have as much ball handling and playmaking responsibilities on a nightly basis mm -hmm. as he did tonight, assuming that he and Kobe are going to be playing in this backcourt together for a while. Yeah, and even looking on the other side, as I mentioned, the defense, Jordan Poole playing, started, actually. He's used to uh, coming off the bench. He started tonight going against Io, 13 points, 4 of 12 shooting. Uh, from him, all the, all his stuff came off the three point line. So Io did an excellent job. And four turnovers also, but Io did an excellent job defending him, but also running him through the ringer. Because every time he got the ball, it was attack, 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 and using his speed, realizing what he does well. That's somebody who's studying the game and truly wants to be a better basketball player, man. And just working on what he doesn't do well, but also attacking what he really truly does well mm -hmm. you know and making it more better more elite putting himself on bulletin boards like hey guys we got to stop this move you know what I'm saying right here that he's doing constantly but on nights like this it's just beautiful to see when teams can't do anything to him the three-point shooting was beautiful mm -hmm. by Io, man nothing was really forced everything was kind of a catch and shoot oh uh, I love the part where he went on his own personal 5-0 run and they called a timeout <laughs> Just because he went on a 5 on run to put the ball, I believe, up 50 to 29. Awesome to see. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, that stuff just warms your heart and lets you know that Io is ready for these moments, man. And this is why I want to go to the postseason is for these kind of things, to get this guy that kind of experience, man. So, because he's ready for that. He truly is. So, yes, just I can't say enough good things about how he has played tonight and how he has played all season. Mm -hmm. He has been absolutely awesome. I said uh, be, last month or before that, that outside of DeMar DeRozan, he is the most consistent bull on this team. And you're seeing it. This is exactly what you're seeing, man. It's great to see. Uh, in a, a similar thought, Joe Bookman in the comments saying, I love how Io just elevates to fill whatever role is needed. No ego, just a hooper. Yeah, yeah. Um. Garcon asking, okay, enough. Time for Terry talk. Discuss. <laughs> are, you, are you referring to Dale and Terry? He getting, loved the uh, three-point shot. More minutes than usual tonight? Or are you referring to Terry Taylor Ooh. and that thunderous alley-oop in the Ooh. fourth quarter? Because that involved both Terrys. Yes, it did. Terry on Terry. From love. Terry to Terry. Terry to Terry. Terry um, to Terry. Yeah, we, we, uh, saw some, we saw some nice things from Dale tonight. Um, 19 <laughs> minutes off the bench. Six points, knocked down his lone three-point attempt, had a couple of, mm -hmm. like, oh, shake your head and smile, <laughs> Dalen moments that you expect. Um, but, you know, again, chipping in everywhere, which is kind of what we've become accustomed to with Dalen. Yeah. Someone who clearly still has his offensive limitations. We, yeah. we were talking about it a little bit while watching the game tonight. Like, he still hasn't really figured out a way to create his own shot. Yes. Uh, he is someone who appears to be skilled and getting even better finding good looks for his teammates. Mm. That one uh, fast break uh, opportunity, I, I remember in the second half where uh, he was on the right and Caruso was on the left and he got the ball and then kind of like cut baseline and dished out a perfect kick out to Caruso for the corner three. Caruso yeah. didn't hit didn't it, hit but it was just right. like, it was just heads up smart uh, decision-making from Terry. Also, you know, the incredible alley-oop. Yeah. Five boards, three assists, two steals. Like that that's the Dale and Terry that we know. That's it. And he's going to fill up those stat sheets. 18 minutes tonight also for him. Uh, Billy had him in a, like a majority of that fourth quarter, mm -hmm. if not the whole fourth quarter. So, But it's great to see that stuff, that Dalen could do those things. Because I also told you, Matt, we were talking about him. Like when he gets the ball, he's downhill. He's attacking. That's what he's going to do. And within that, he's got to find his offense. We know when he attacks that he's going to be awesome at dishing the basketball, finding somebody – uh, who's open and getting them a great shot. What's it, what's it going to be when he just attacks the rim? Because we saw multiple times of him attacking the rim, and that's what you were calling those old Dalen moments right there. 
because it was him attacking the rim without a plan. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just going yeah. up in there. It reminded me of Kobe White rookie season going one on three, one mm-hmm. on four all the time. I'm just going in, head down, I'm going in. I, I think he needs to develop something like a little floater because with how he attacks, everybody's back on their heels all the time. I feel like he can get to that, you know what I'm saying, make free throw line extended, you know what I'm saying, or or right in the middle of that, hit you with a little floater because nobody's going to be able to jump and get that if mm-hmm. their feet are going back and back and back like that. He'll have all the room and opportunity to do what he wants. When it starts slowing down for him, I think it'll be so much better because he's 100, 200 miles an hour constantly. And that's great. But in your mind, you have to be you have to be knowing exactly when to stop, when to pull this, when to do that. Watch Ayo, you know, how he does it. He's fast. He's constantly moving and going forward. Watch Kobe White. He's constantly going forward. When did Kobe connect and get his? When he started slowing down a little bit mm-hmm. and realizing, oh, you know what? Let me hit you with this Euro step. And we did see a daily Euro step we out did. there. <laughs> it was kind of fly, kind of flavorful. I liked it a lot. But, yeah, man, I, I think just – the game is just has to slow down just a little bit for him, and I think he'll be so much better for it, man. But he he puts pressure, 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 pressure on the opposing team, and that's stuff that I like. Uh, Sal Carson saying, Dalen looks good coming off the pick and roll, just needs to get his feet right, pull up, uh, and can those jumpers. Yeah. Uh, also saying, we need him to go up strong on the rim attacks. The floater would be good, definitely. Yeah. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Uh, okay, let me uh, just quickly do this. I, I do also want to touch on Batim, who led the bench in minutes tonight. He did. Uh, before that, before Chase, Chase and Ashland have a freaking stroke. I see your your point sure. about the... Well, Chase and Ashland are just very enthused about the win tonight. Okay. And, and very enthused about one of their predictions. That is, hey, the Bulls have these three winnable games on oh, deck. Oh, Lord. And three games under I'll be three winnable here. games means we're going to make our way to the 500, I'll right? Be over here. After we beat the Wizards and then the Blazers and then the Rockets. I see you, Jason Ashland. I see you and I hear you and I stand with you. <laughs> Katie Brick, crazy. Um, we'll see. We'll see. And don't think I didn't see that thing you tried to slip in about a veggie burger. I never agreed to any sort of bet that had me eating a veggie burger as the Bulls win these three games and get back to 500 finally. That's very true. What I said is that I would come here on this show and eat crow and admit I was wrong in my prediction that the Bulls would not win three straight to get back to 500. Because a bird is actual meat, Joey, so he'll he'll definitely do that. Never (laughs) eaten a crow. (laughs) Never. Not not an actual crow. Okay. I mean, you know, I've eaten crow in the uh, sure. literary yes. n- comparison, uh, literary metaphor right. kind of way. Uh, but no, never. Have you, have you ever eaten a crow? No. Rabbit. What are we, like, working on the wall at the yeah. Night's Watch? Like- <laughs> Times are hard, man. <laughs> Times are tough, baby. Oh, man. Also, there's a new movie. The, they remade The Crow. I saw the trailer for it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So- Scars Guard. Ooh. It's going to star in Which that. one? Doesn't matter. They're all good. Uh, the other one. The other one. <laughs> you know you know exactly what I'm talking about, too. <laughs> but he's gonna, the one who was it, the one who played in it. Right. Uh, um, Steven? A- Alexander? No, that's... Yeah. Stellan. We'll take it. Sure. <laughs> also in Dune. Shout out Dune. Shout out Dune. Joey loves the Dune. People are st- stoked about that Joey Dune Joey loves the Dune. It's the I, new Star Wars, man. Okay. Dune 3 is going to be crazy. For the record, I made a pancake the other day. It looked exactly like a character in Dune. See what I mean? Did you... Try to make your pancake no. look like no, a Dune I character. No, I flipped it over. It looked like the worm from Dune. Like exactly like it. Interesting. I'm very proud of you, Joe. I confirmed with other people. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I have so many questions. So do I. But you know what? Let's uh, knock out a couple quick ads, and then yeah. we will hear from Will the Go Golly on the other side of it. Apparently, Eli in the comments said eating crow is bad luck. Mm. Did not know that. Mm. Uh, what's next, Dave? Joe, Joe, what time is it? Game time up. Game time up. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Re- regular Joe got excited. It's all right, man. It's all right. <laughs> you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events nearest you with killer. Last minute deals, all in prices. Views from your seat, the best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying those tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right after the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It is not the place. No. It is the place to find last minute seats. 
Find exclusive flash deals, sponsor deals on tickets for football, hockey, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and so much more. And with zone deals, you pick the section and game time does the selecting for an average savings of drum roll pack. Eighteen percent. And with the game time guarantee, it means you will always get the best price possible. So take the guesswork out of buying those tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use that code C H G O. Get yourself twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Terms apply. That's C H G O. Get yourself twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. Cause my pack. What time is it? Get out. Uh, you know how I always feel like like I am in game time mode? Yes, yes, I do. Eating bacon. Yes, sounds right. I told you earlier tonight about some delicious bacon I had last night. He definitely told me about the bacon that he had. And it wasn't Charlie the Bacon Guy's bacon because mm-hmm. I was out at a restaurant. Right. Shout out Smith and Walensky. Great dinner last night. Um, But Charlie the Bacon Guy, if you're looking to have bacon at home that you have ready whenever you want it, whenever you get that craving mm-hmm. for bacon, mm-hmm. which we all know we get, yeah. I don't know, 76,000 times a day. Charlie the Bacon Guy is the guy to go to got right to now. put that bacon in your fridge or your freezer. Yes. If you eat bacon at a restaurant, do, do you go home and eat bacon? Sometimes. Yeah, I'm just asking. I'm just, yeah. There's no strict rules yeah, about it. ordering bacon at a restaurant and then not being allowed to have bacon at home no, later no. that same day. No, let's say you weren't allowed. Just asking how you do. That's all. There are also never leftovers when it comes to bacon. That's so it's not like I would be eating bacon at a restaurant and be like, well, you know what? I think I'm going to, can I get a doggy bag? I'm going to bring it home. <laughs> no. First of all, there's going to be no doggy bag of bacon with you, sir. That's it's what I'm saying. not making it out of there. That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. But... Charlie the Bacon Guy has some delicious bacon. So many different flavors. More than Baskin-Robin ice cream flavors, y'all. You got to check him out. Uh, he's based out of Woodbridge, Illinois. He makes craft bacon and bacon jams in 35 different flavors. Uh, you can get them from Charlie Vacuum Sealed, and it freezes perfectly. Bacon lasts in the package up to 60 days in the fridge, and for a week longer after you break that seal, It'll last for a full nine months in the freezer. Bacon jam lasts even longer. 90 days in the fridge, up to a year in your freezer if you just want to have bacon jam on 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 hand you know open freezer in case of bacon jam emergency um it wouldn't last that long not nearly that long in my freezer no and it never does um bacon jam goes perfectly on anything in anything scramble it into some of your scrambled eggs in the morning you could spread it on your toast put it on your charcuterie board Mm -hmm. The next time you're hosting and being fancy about it. Oh, fancy. <laughs> he also has some really cool merch, coffee bugs, glasses, beanies, hats, t-shirts, stickers, all, f- all sorts of fun stuff. Check them out. Uh, you can find it at uh, charliethebaconguy.com. .com. Instagram, charliethebaconguy. Twitter, at czthebaconguy. You can also email him, charliethebaconguy at, at gmail.com. Starting now, you can save 10% off your order at charliethebaconguy.com. When you use promo code CHGO at checkout, you could pick it up. The most efficient way to do it. Or if you're not uh, super close to uh, Woodridge, you could have uh, him meet you halfway somewhere. He can have it delivered to you. You can even have it shipped to you, whatever way you want to do it. You can find it and more info, info on how to get that delicious bacon in your life. CharlieTheBaconGuy.com. He makes the bacon so you can bring it home. Mm-hmm. Joe. Go there. That's where he's the goat! The goat! Joining us on the Go Talk Hotline is our guy, Willie Go Gottlieb from the UC. Follow him for all of his Bulls reporting. Will underscore Gottlieb. Read his stuff, allchgo.com. Will, nice uh, nice cushy cruise to victory tonight and a career night from Io Desumu. What is your biggest takeaway from this uh, laugher over the Washington Wizards? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think it was the second time they've won by 20 or more, and the first time they've won by 10 since January 20th when they beat the Grizzlies here by 20. Um, it's only the eighth game that they've won by 10 point, m- by more than 10 points uh, on this year. So definitely a comfortable win. I think uh, it was nice to just get a little bit of breathing room, a little bit of rest to where you didn't really need to force feed DeMar too much. And that really opened up a lot of opportunities for guys like Ayo Desumu, who had a career night. Um, and just continues to, to impress. I think, you know, last game 
we had talked to him and talked to Billy about how there was kind of an opportunity there without Kobe for him to get downhill, put some pressure on the defense and create some offense. And, you know, the, the big takeaway is like, you know, obviously Kobe being out of the lineup, you're going to miss those points, right? That's 20 points a game that just isn't going to be there anymore. But a lot of times you can find a way to produce that 20 points by committee. But what the Bulls really feel like they're missing is those 16 to 18 paint touches per game that Kobe gives you. And so how can you manufacture that? How can you replicate that? And Io needs to be somebody who, who does that. And uh, I think, you know, he said it, Billy said it last game, it wasn't enough. And I think it was really the first, first time he's had an opportunity to have the ball in his hands a little bit more like that. And, you know, you saw from game one to game two in terms of his chance to do that, the huge improvement that he made. So uh, just getting downhill, whether it was finishing by himself or getting one of his nine assists, I just thought he did a lot better. He was feeling really good. Billy was very pleased with the way that he played. Um, and I think it just speaks to the fact that he has a little bit more room to grow. I mean, it's not just going to be the kind of thing where he's the catch and shoot threes guy, maybe attack some closeouts, but it seems like he has, uh, and just with his work ethic and the way that he um, just continues to decide that where I'm at is not good enough. Um, I think there's still a lot more offensive upside to go. So really exciting game from my own. Well, I was a little upset at how Billy had some of these guys out there um, in the fourth quarter. I, I felt like that, the bench could at least hold a lead against the Wizards. Um, a bunch of three guys who I knew and the rest I just honestly didn't. Um, <laughs> but I'm, cause I'm sure you could break down to me why, you know, those guys were out there. Uh, but Ayo with the 40 minutes and DeMar with 34 when he only took seven shots and Caruso who looked like he got hurt. I think that's what really kind of upset me was seeing that happen. Um, but, yeah, talk to me about that, the, the reasoning behind it. Um, and why? <laughs> well, uh, Caruso was fine after the game. There's no injury to report on him so far, um, as far as what Billy told us. Um, so obviously we'll keep an eye on, on the injury report, but, uh, it doesn't really look like that was anything. So that was good to hear. Um, you know, the, the wizards cut it down to like 16 or 14 at one point. So I think that they were just being extra cautious. You know, Billy kind of pointed out that DeMar, wasn't taking a lot of shots, but he was still manipulating the game. You know, they cut it to 16 and then he got to the free throw line and put it to 18 and kind of re reset and recorrected the momentum. And he, he felt like that was really valuable. And then for I, was just like, man, he's cooking. He's got an opportunity here to really grow. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're right. Like I think the, the minutes load has been something that these guys need to be careful about. I have 41 minutes, Caruso 34, DeRozan 35. Um, in a game they won by 29 so they probably did not need to be out there but I think also like the way that these games can kind of turn if you take your starters out at the start of the fourth quarter and it's a 20 point game and then all of a sudden they hit three threes and it's a nine point game like it may be a little bit hard once you've told them they're done for the night so um, that's just a guess I mean I, I think Billy's just generally a little bit more conservative with you know cleaning up games and quite frankly they just have not had a lot of games like this to uh to experiment. So maybe that had something to do with it too. But um, I know Billy has been asked and has been answering the question of minutes all year. And, you know, he's missing five of the guys on his roster. So I think he's just trying to do the best he can. Cause when you take out your starters, now you're putting in the third and fourth string guys instead of the second string guys. Uh, go, we, we got some, some silliness and some antics uh, down the stretch of this one. Vooch getting into it with, um, Draymond Green's uncle, according to Stacey King, <laughs> uh, uh, Omer, Omer Rui on that uh, Wizards bench trying to make things happen, trying to make a name for himself, throwing his body around. Uh, curious if Vooch spoke to y'all after this one tonight and, and if he had any further intel on what exactly they were uh, having a frank difference of opinion about out there on the court, court tonight. Yeah, so I guess uh, Vooch, like either turn the ball over or the ball was stolen from him and he was walk, running back on the other way and had something to say to the ref about it and maybe thought he should have gotten a foul or something like that. Um, and then he, Omarui had some choice words for him. Uh, didn't, uh, didn't like exactly what, whatever it was that he said, which said he called him the B word. Um, I don't know in what context, but Vooch uh, took exception to that obviously and decided to, 
uh, kind of put him in his place and just let him know, like, don't say that to a veteran player who's been around for 10 plus years in this league has been an all-star. Like you gotta, you can trash talk, you can, uh, you know, whatever, but like, don't be disrespectful. And he felt like that's not something that any player should ever say to anyone. So he took exception to that. And then I think he obviously had the N one and got to flex on him a little bit, which he said he was just having fun with. So, um, obviously not like a huge deal. It didn't result in anything major, but, um, just last few games, it seems like Vooch has really let his emotions fly a little bit. And sometimes they've gone a little bit off the rails tonight, obviously not uh, quite the case, but um, yeah, I think he was just kind of taking exception to what uh, Amaru said to him. Uh, well, the other person we kind of talked about was uh, Daylon Terry, just the game that he kind of had. Um, if you could expound on just what you saw from him, because we saw, obviously it felt like what we usually see some good, some bad, you know what I'm saying? Some indifference, some in between. We saw him hit the three, uh, but we saw him, you know, going to the lane and, you know, kind of not, you know, knowing what to do, you know, when he was going up with the shot. But your opinion on uh, Daylon, because he definitely filled up the stat sheet. He did, yeah. Six points, five rebounds, two assists, two steals. Um, you know, I think it's kind of the same story with him. And, you know, there's going to be nights where the jump shot looks a little bit better and he's able to make some. Um, but I think until defenses are really pulling out to him, and closing out hard to where he can attack those closeouts, it's a little bit difficult to put some of his skills on display. And uh, Billy made that note about Io and the work that he put in to get his jump shot to be not just like passable, but a real asset, a real threat for the Bulls offense to where now teams are closing out on him. Now he can put his speed on display. Now he can put his ability to finish and just uh, facilitate on display. So I think that's kind of the next step for Dalen. He's been working hard with coach uh, Peter Patton. We see him all the time working with them. Um, and he has gotten a lot better, but I think until that really happens, it's going to just be a lot of in- inconsistent because we've seen some of the passing ability that he has, the transition, the defense. Like there's some there's some interesting tools there, but he needs that shooting to unlock it. So um, you know, there's going to be moments where he hits some threes and he looks good. He's able to drive and you know attack closeouts and get to the rim. That's great, but until it happens on a consistent basis, I think it's just going to be a little bit difficult for him to come by consistent offense. When I saw your tweets uh, from Billy's pregame media availability, updates on Kobe, did not play tonight. Julian Phillips, did not play tonight. Two-week timeline given. <sighs> what other information, context, updates can you tell us about what Billy had to say about the health and, uh, you know, futures of Kobe and Julian? Yeah, so Kobe, um, a little bit more of a timeline, even though it's still vague, he said, um, that he is doing pretty well, but the hope is that he can continue to pr- progress as he has the last couple of days. And then coming out of the weekend, this upcoming week, that is the hope. So they've got a game Monday against Portland. It sounds like that one probably is not going to happen. And then uh, I believe Wednesday they have the Rockets, um, or maybe it's Thursday that they have the Rockets. So that would be kind of the first real chance, I think, for Kobe to come back. But if not, then then likely the, the final game. But Kobe's in the locker room tonight. He was having fun. He was joking around. Um, so he seems to be in good spirits. And then Julian Phillips, not much more to add there other than um, he's been dealing with the foot issue on and off for a little bit of time. And I think they kind of wanted to just put the boot on it to, uh, you know, it's flaring up. They want to put the boot on it to really take the weight off of it so that he uh, has a chance to let that calm down and heal a little bit. So they're going to look at him again in two weeks um, and hopefully it's nothing serious. So we'll, we'll get more information then. Will, two, two questions uh, for you before I get out of here. One, what do you think of my fantasy football trophy that's sitting uh, right here on, on the desk? This crystal, wonderful crystal trophy that's sitting here looking all up, amazing honey. and wonderful. Let me grab that for you. I want to move this out the way. It's right in front of the Larry O'Brien right there. Look sitting that. right here looking all special. It's very heavy, by the way. This is a very heavy trophy, Beautiful. sir. This is wonderful, well earned. There it is. I just wanted to get gold well approval because it will not make a return into this studio. So, you have good approval. That is thank you, sir. <laughs> and secondly, sir, since you're getting out of here, who, thank you very much. Who will be your goat, your goon of the night? The goat goon. Goat goon. Uh, can I say Caleb Williams? Shoom! <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Actually. Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can. I kind of like that. There's no rules against player. you saying that name. That's true. It has to be a Bulls player. I'll go with Booch for the for the antics at the end that were the really only exciting thing to happen in that game. Uh, but if not, I'm going with the future starting quarterback of 
it, it doesn't have to be a Bulls player. Like we we've been gooned of the night. Joey Father's been gooned. It doesn't have to be a Bulls player. You know what I mean? But I feel you. Caleb it is. All right. Wow. Shout out All right. to uh, listen though. I'm wishing him the best and I'm very glad that this toxic saga can now finally come to an end. Yes. Agreed. Uh, yes, yes. Agreed. Absolutely. Uh Will, thanks for joining us, man. Bulls fans, read all of his stuff covering the Bulls, all CHO.com. Sign up to become a diehard so you can get the best of the best of Will's coverage, breakdowns, analysis, and more. Follow him on the Twitter machine at Will underscore Gottlieb. Buddy, uh, get home safe. Have a great night. Have a great tomorrow. Uh, and uh, we'll talk to you Monday. Talk to you guys. Peace. The GOAT. GOAT. All right. Well, we got his vote. Shall we knock out the rest of it? Hitting me with it, Joey. <laughs> galore i've been here tonight in the chco studios y'all goon of the night brought to you by empire today all they do is floors 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 no matter what 580 to 300 back empire today <laughs> spathis joey i will start with you who will be your goon of the night you know this is a tough one. Oh. Caleb Williams? No. <laughs> not going to go Caleb Williams because I don't want to be eaten alive by Bears fans Man. in the chat. <laughs> but I've got a couple people I want to shout out. Vooch obviously is one mm-hmm. um, for his antics, which I which is like, you know, I'm not the biggest Vooch fan always, but he, he does have some sass to mm-hmm. him, mm-hmm. which is enjoyable to watch occasionally. And mm-hmm. I think it's funny when he gets like annoyed with this clearly lower tier player. So I yeah. I had I enjoyed that. Iota Sumu obviously um deserves a deserves a shout out for Goon of the Night. I agree. I mean, probably more than a shout out if we're being honest. Thirty four points, nine mm-hmm. assists, nine assists, one mm-hmm. one turnover. He's probably the goon of the night in my eyes. I also want to give a shout out to uh fake Woj, um, who I think <laughs> stole the show a bit. Very goon antics, yes. Um you Very know, just true. sort of random. I was thinking about that. I'm like, why tonight? How'd this guy think of, you know, tonight, the Derrick Rose? So I'll go with Io, mm. um, but a lot of goons tonight. Mm. I like it. A lot of goons. Matt Peck, right. sir, your goon of the night. Um, must give some goon love to the worm, uh, as our, as yes. our friend Ben Dean uh, just mentioned in the comments. Yes. Anytime Dennis Rodman is in the United Center, it makes my heart smile. Yes. That was crazy. Like It seemed like they were maybe trying to get him to address the crowd, mm-hmm. and he kind of took the mic for a second and tried to speak and got... Don't give him a live mic. All, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bold choice. Bold choice, You know, Bulls game ops people <laughs> giving a live hot mic to Dennis Rodman. Yeah. Um, but mostly, he just, like, tried to speak a couple times and yeah. was overwhelmed with emotion and yeah. waved the crowd. And, I mean, Dennis is a complex character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Flawed and beautiful, yeah. Like everyone out there, it is so apparent that this three-year stint that he had with this team mm-hmm. decades ago now still means something to him deep inside when he gets that kind of reception, yeah, from Bulls fans in that building, yeah. Some of whom, like when they panned across on the broadcast, the UC crowd going crazy when they saw Dennis was there, were kids who like. Never saw Dennis play. Yeah. But the dude is a legend. Yeah. And he's a legend for a few different reasons. And he's yeah, a, yeah. a legend in a few different ways. Yeah. But, man, this fan base loves him. Yeah. And I'm always happy to see him. And I always wish the best for him. Mm. And a dude who can take a mic and not even say anything and then still get a crowd of people to do that. Yeah, man. That's goon shit. He's right. And shout out to those kids. One of them had on a Barkley Suns jersey also. <laughs> So shout out to that kid for that. Um, yeah, well said, man. Very well said. Well, goon of the night. Joey Spathis. Got it. There it is. And Bang. <laughs> goon of the night. Goes to Nikola Vucevic. Urge. Honestly, it was going to Dennis Rodman Urge. all the way up <laughs> until that. Why? Because I have never, ever seen Vooch <laughs> do something like that, Dude. ever. 
And we've been watching him. We for saw him years. flick off a ref one time. Yes, right? we saw that. <laughs> I can expect that. You know, European. I can. I can see that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Flipping you off, cursing at you, pushing, hitting you with the too small. I ain't never seen him do that, bro. But he, and he was right because that dude needed to be put in his place. He was he was flailing wild. around Not, that court, yeah. acting a damn fool. I would. Not all too smalls are created equal. Like it was a very like obvious. In your face, too small. He wasn't right. running back. It was yeah. literally like, like looking right in his face. Pat Bev does it to the person face. on the counter when he's picking up his dry cleaning. Right. right. <laughs> but I'm saying he wasn't like it wasn't a lower. I said key. medium starch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Sorry, I'm what saying, were you saying, man? Joe? <laughs> That's it. Like, <laughs> oh my goodness. He, like, but it was very like it wasn't like he was like trotting back on defense and just kind of like hit it like low. He no, did he's... it very obviously. He did it right next to him. He in stood there face. right next to him and mm-hmm. he hit him with the Looking two at him and everyone yes. in the stadium saw it. Yes. And it was after the immediate play after they had the little dust up. Mm-hmm. So it was the very next play. And he did that in the and one and hit the free throw. No, that's he deserves it. Mm-hmm. He earned it. Goon of the night in a very rare occasion. Man. Goes to Nikola. Is that Vucevic. is that Vooch's first win, Joe? Let me check the uh, record books. Check the, uh, record books. While he's checking the record, the record books, books. Uh, Dave, you want to give a shout out to our friends at Coors Light? Chilling. Woo, yeah. It's what we like to do. It's what we always on. And the people that help us do that is the people at Coors Light. Because that cold lager, cold filter deliciousness is always available. And it can be available to you too, y'all. Because whether it's your team stressing you out, not tonight, or life in general. Things can feel just a little bit chaotic. That's why Coors Light helps you find moments to chill all year long. Oh, it's just a beautiful thing. Mm. So some of you people out there celebrating St. Patty's, understand you're wilding out, you're tripping. When you get in there, chill. Grab your Coors Light. Chill. (laughs) And enjoy yourself, man. So when those mountains turn blue, it's as cold as the Rockies. Coors Light is cold lager, cold filter, and cold package mm-hmm. for a smoother finish. Smooth. We can attest to that. So smooth. <laughs> when it's time to chill, open the Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, crisp as the Colorado Rockies. And when it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer that I reach for. You see what I just did? I reached for it. I got it. It's mine. It's beautiful. Get Coors Light delivered straight Inception. to your door. With Instacart. That's right. You don't have to go out for St. Patty's Day. Mm -mm. You can get Coors Light. Stay stay at home where it's safe. Where it's safe, ladies and gents. Stay inside and get some cold Coors Light delivered right to you via Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com. Slash CHGO Basketball. CoorsLight.com. Slash CHGO Basketball. Coors Light. Find your chill. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Light Brewing Company. Golden Colorado. Golden Colorado. Joe, do we have a uh, confirmation? This was Vucevic's first mm. win of the mm. season. First win. First nomination. First win. No, first nomination. <laughs> I'm sure if it, was, it probably wasn't his first nomination. Probably not his but first nomination. Yes, but first win. But first win. Shout That's big. Big time. Big stuff. It's always yep. hard to get that first one on the board. That's it. Then the rest start to fall. A <laughs> uh, couple of super chats I think we saw. AK just just threw one in for 1999. Mm-hmm. Uh, saw bits of this game. Bulls clawing towards 500 yet again. <laughs> oh, AK. <laughs> uh, good win when like half your roster's on the injured list. Uh, was in Florida for work, meeting all of last week, so missed most games and post games. You're supporting the channel. Appreciate you, AK. Appreciate you, AK, as also, always. Also, congratulations on taking a nice little brain break yes, from the Bulls. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you didn't miss too much. I mean, some more players got hurt. Yeah. And uh, we, they won some, lost some. Oh, where's my I hope light? you missed that Mavs game. Ooh. Or, you know, unless you enjoy watching Luka pick teams apart, because then you would have enjoyed it. Or Daniel Gafford hitting all those shots. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. 33 and 33. 33. I'm still <laughs> so sad that he had that layup miss, like in the first minute of that game. Yeah. He was two away from tying and three away from setting yeah. that record. I appreciate him getting it out the way in the first quarter. Yeah. But now all I know uh, is when I say Will Chamberlain, I'm right behind him. Daniel Gafford. That's all I know. Just craziness. How awesome is it? Um... Good luck on your quest to see this team get to 500, AK. Wish you nothing but the best. Uh, the Duke. Shout out to the Duke. Haven't seen you in a while, man. I know you said he was hanging out in the Bears emergency pod today. Yes, um, he was. 
saying got trolled by the duke hashtag badger for life <laughs> must have heard us talking about our wisconsin badger hate earlier don't you shade me peck good w we back <laughs> hey man nothing against you nothing against you mm. you had a good time went to wisconsin had a good time that's cool so did you did you do that did you do those things i, I did want to point out uh uh d laws was it d laws 23 yeah d laws 23 and uh clout mm-hmm both big fans of turkey bacon. Hey. Now, I will say Clout, yeah. ah, Clout is a Muslim, so that's why he's enjoying the turkey bacon. Okay. D-Law's out. I, he's just probably off of that and trying to, you know, just trying to be better, I guess. <laughs> I should bite my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Let, bite it. All of my opinions bite on it. this subject from here on out would probably be offensive. Yes, it's true. <laughs> Enjoy the bacon, guys. Enjoy the turkey bacon. Absolutely, man. And shout out to y'all for being up in here, man. Uh, Dave, can I get a happy St. Patrick's Day fans in your Irish Jamaican accent? <laughs> I mean, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. It is. And today is Chicago Saturday, St. Patrick's. It is. So basically, honorary St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the morning to you. Bumble clots. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, we're drinking a cold course line. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Eli's never had bacon. I'm sorry, Eli. Oh, man. I'm sorry. What type of to you, Eli? <laughs> Get your bacon in your system, don't you know? <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Um, also, uh, speaking of St. Patty's, grab yourself this dope green CHO flag shirt available at the Merch Locker now, part of the Chicago collection that we just dropped oh, look at on it. our second anniversary. How dope is that? Uh, back on March 4th. And, uh, you know, maybe you weren't ready for it this year, but grab it so next year mm -hmm. or any other time you want to wear a little dash green. Yes. You'll have it. Uh, also, it. so excited for so many of those other Chicago collection Ooh, items yes. that are on the way. On oh, the way. To my house. Oh, beautiful thing. Oh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> the dash law said, oh, Paul. Oh, Paul. <laughs> oh, Paul. <laughs> Is that how you say it? David O. Watson. Is that how you say it? Oh, Paul. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> foolish. Lord of mercy. Uh, AK threw in one more little 199 Super Jet asking, Derrick Rose retired? Question mark. Are you joking about the fact that that was a fake tweet? Or did it's you not know yet? A fake tweet. Tweet. He did not retire. It's Can fake. It's fake. It's fake. Learn how Twitter works, people. It it sucks yes. that there are people out there who are like, oh, I'm going to get my jollies by duping people with this fake account I'll of allow this real person. Us. I'll allow that because he's right in this instance. It's dumb. It's some jerk it shit. It sucks that there are people out there who find that to be amusing yeah. or makes them feel better about themselves. I'm going to pull the blinds over on, on these people today. Pretending to be Adrian Wojnarowski and saying that Derrick Rose retired. Yeah. What sick, dark, twisted people yeah. find any sort of meaning or joy out of doing that? But I don't like it. Sad news, folks. Tell me. A lot of people out there in the universe suck. <laughs> they don't provide value. They are only here to try to drag us cool people down. <laughs> don't let them. Don't let them. Do your homework. That's right. Know what you're talking about before you spread that shit so you don't look like a fool and you don't waste people's time. Or... Come here and find out exactly what the truth is, and we will absolutely tell you. Hey, Julia, sorry that you said. Cheer up. That's right. It's Saturday. Tomorrow's Sunday. That's right. St. Patrick's Day. St. Patty's. <laughs> Only person who should be in a bad mood right now are snakes. snakes. Supp supposedly, if you believe in. That's right. You know. That's how we did. We go clubbing. If, if you believe in ghost stories or whatever the hell the that snake. is. <laughs> clubbing them snakes. Clubbing them snakes. Uh, <laughs> and slapping them. <laughs> Speaking of clubbing, if you are still out and about tonight, partying in Chicago or anywhere, because it's Saturday of St. Patty's weekend, please get home safe. Um, please travel and transport yourselves responsibly. Mm. Have a great time. And then drink plenty of water tomorrow. Uh, yes. <laughs> Hydrate, y'all. We are off tomorrow. Bulls are off tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll get uh, you know some positive updates on the team and people's uh, various injury and health statuses. The Bulls back in action on Monday, taking on the Blazers. 7 p.m. tip, 6.30 Central pregame. We will be here. Mm -hmm. We will see you then. Mm -hmm. For Joey on the controls, 
at Joey Spathis. There he is. Twin brother of Troll Joe. Mm-hmm. Big Dave Bow, B-A-W-L Sports. <laughs> Our guy, Wheel to Go, Will underscore Golly. I'm Bulls underscore Peck. We are CSU underscore Bulls. We appreciate you. We love you, Bulls Nation. Have a great rest of your weekend. We will talk to you on Monday. See you again. Club of the Snakes. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Thank you.